In the previous video, we were talking about the Fourier transform. In particular, I gave you an introduction of the fundamental concepts related to this technique, and I'm going to recap a few of them. So we talked about ways to represent functions. I uh, showed you uh, this example in which I, I had this function represented by a series of points sampled in time. And an alternative of this representation in which we define that this function is actually a polynomial. So I was able to represent the same function instead of storing all different values of the points evaluated at, the, at different axes. Um, I'm going to represent the same function by using three coefficients. Those three coefficients are related to the polynomial that um, shapes this function. So in here I have the coefficients 5 related to x to the power of 0, 2 related to x to the power of 1, and 1 related to x to the power of 2. So by having those three coefficients, I'm going to represent the whole function in even for values that are not included in this set of points here. So I'm, I'm going to uh, be able to even reconstruct points that are in between those values or uh, before and after those values. So the idea uh, of this, um, this concept is that we, I, we are going to represent a function by using a sum of other functions. In the Fourier transform, instead of using polynomials, we are going to formulate a way to sum cosines and sines with different coefficients. Remember that cosine and sine are interesting functions to be used as building blocks because they are, uh, both of them are periodic with period 2 pi and they only differ by a shift. So remember that cosine starts when, when I evaluate cosine of 0, it is 1, while sine of 0 is 0. And as I go uh, on along the, the axis here, uh, computing or evaluating the, the points, cosine and sine actually have the same shape of the function. So the pattern is very similar. However, they uh, differ by a shift, in, in this case, in this axis here. So when I uh, combine cosine and sine together, in a complex exponential, which is given by Euler's formula, we can unfold the complex exponential in the third dimension and look at it as a spiral. So it will, if I looked at it uh, from the plane perspective, I'm going to uh, visualize the unitary circle. So basically what it's doing here is uh, evaluating the values of cosine and sine against each other. This is going to be useful in the case of Fourier transform because we are using actually the complex exponential in order to sum the, the functions cosine and sine. So we are going, not going to explicitly use cosine and sine but instead using the complex exponential. So the Fourier series as we seen in the um, previous video allows to write a function by using a discrete sum of complex exponentials with different frequencies. The Fourier transform, which is the technique we are going to use in image processing, is the evaluation for each frequency omega of its coefficient c of omega. So uh, this is the formula for the, the general Fourier transform and it sums, uh, sometimes if we consider it to be a um, continuous function, it can be also an integral. But in here we are using a discrete version of it. So it sums from every value of t. So um, I'm assuming here uh, there is a function 
that is de defined along time. So from t to minus infinity to infinity, it multiplies every um, every point t, so the function evaluated at t, with e to the power of minus j omega t. See that t changes here a long time. So I'm going. Um, I'm basically multiplying pointwise the complex exponential and f of t. But omega is fixed. So I'm going, I have to compute f of omega for different values of omega, for different frequencies. It will be, um, become clear in a while. So one thing that we um, must observe is that the functions cosine and sine, they, uh, both of them cover all the input axes. What this means is that I'm, I'm able to compute cosine and sine for every value that I want. So cosine of omega t plus sine of omega t. But note that we have here two coefficients, a and b. Those coefficients define, uh, as in the polynomial, the contribution of the functions cosine and sine for the signal. And those values, a and b, are the coefficients that we are going to learn, or to, uh, not to learn, but to uh, compute, actually, um, using the formula of the Fourier transform. I can write this as c of omega times e to the power of j omega t, using the Euler's formula. So, now, after... Uh, summing all possible sinusoids with different frequencies, we have a series of values. So I have omega 1, which is a frequency, could be, for example, 1, and its coefficients, a1 and b1, related to that. Omega 2 and its coefficients, a2 and b2. Omega 3 and its coefficients, a3 and b3, and so on and so forth. So what uh, we are going to have here is that the Fourier transform will allow us to take a signal from the time domain or the space domain in case of uh, images to the frequency domain. So the uh, signals are going to be um, written instead of f of t, we are going to be to write them as f, capital F of omega. In case of images we are going to discuss in the next video, but we take the image from the space domain, which are x and y coordinates, space coordinates, to capital F of uv, and uv are frequencies. So, when we plot the function in the Fourier domain, we use for each frequency a complex exponential with the relative amplitude of the cosine, real part, and of the sine imaginary part as a function of omega. Now I have everything as a function of omega, so the axis, uh, the first axis is uh, omega and not t anymore or x. So let us do uh, now the, um, the explanation for the algorithm. So now uh, what I have pra in practice in when I'm uh, implementing it what I have is a sum from 0 to n minus 1 because I assume that I only have f between 0 and n minus 1 multiplied by the, exp the complex exponential. So I'm going to evaluate f of omega for different frequencies and obtain the amplitudes of sines and sines so that we can reconstruct f of t if needed. Why we use um, sines and cosines? So I'm, uh, I talked about that. Um, previously, but I'm going to uh, emphasize that the universe has a lot of periodic phenomena and humans observe time and space phenomena as also uh, periodic, um, periodic ha having pro periodic properties. For example, the energy propagation of the el electromagnetic spectrum is described in waves, including the light that generates images. Also, the 
writing a function in terms of a signal or an image in terms of the frequencies allows us to take the actual the, the, the first domain into another domain that is easier to uh, work with or to handle for example uh, by using differential equations let's see three examples here of, of functions so I just plotted here three functions those are three um, signs basically so I, I just used a very basic sine function and in the first one if I um, asked you how many times it repeats well it is clear here that it repeats one two three times so for once in one second it is a little bit small here so I'm going to zoom it out yeah so uh, from zero to one so in one second let's say in time it repeats three times this means that it is a sign with frequency three the in the middle part here in the middle plotting i have a different function that now repeats the same pattern 10 times so it has frequency 10 and in the last one here if i uh, asked you how many repetitions there is so it's kind of hard to evaluate that or to assess that visually right so this is um one way to think about the Fourier transform it will allows us to extract this information to, or to see it so what is the frequency that dominates a given signal um, I included here a uh, an excerpt of a source code in Python to produce um, to produce a signal in a given frequency and here I'm using frequency 10 so this is used to to build or to plot the the middle uh, the, the function in the middle here so uh, how the algorithm works so let's see this this sum here if I have to implement that how can I do it so I'm um, see that I have to sum f of t times e to the minus j omega t there is a dt here because sorry because it was an um, um, an integral and I changed it to a sum to make it easier but j just ignore the dt here I could use um, uh, an integral as well in the case of continuous function so uh, what was what this this means this means that I'm going to have to compute for every value of omega so I'm going to do that by um, iterating from i equal to 0 to n minus 1 and I'm going to multiply f of t for every t with e to the power of minus j e minus j omega i t what is this omega i so it's omega of 0 so it's the first frequency which is 0 this means that I, I, what I'm actually doing is uh, I could uh, just decompose this, this by f times the cosine for every t and f times the sine for every, every t. This means that I can decompose the function like so. So uh, again, please just ignore this dt here. And, and in the end, I have to sum or integrate in the case of a, a continuous function for all t getting then the coefficients a which is related to the real part or the cosine and b which is related to the imaginary part or the sine and then finally what I have is f of omega i which is actually the two uh, coefficients coded in a, in a single um, complex exponential so in here I'm showing you uh, the complex number um, separated so the real part and the imaginary part let us uh, just see an example uh, in the next uh, video I'm going to show you the code the source code complete one uh, 
to illustrate. But in here, let's say that I have a signal, that I, I build this signal by using a sum of a sine and a cosine. So in here I have a sine, and this sine is 2 pi here, because this is the period that I want to use, and I'm converting it. Um, 3 here defines the frequency. So it's a sine of uh, frequency 3 hertz. And the cosine is 8 hertz. But I'm also changing the amplitude of them in order to give a function uh, a different shape. So this is the uh, actual function. And note that it is very hard here to just visually see that we have a sine of frequency 3 and a cosine of frequency 8. It's not that easy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the Fourier transform. Let's see here when I um, I want to do, for example, uh, for frequency 3 hertz, I'm going to evaluate the function for frequency 3 hertz. So just recapping the, um, the algorithm here. So um, if we are doing this for loop for frequency 3, what happens is that we, I'm, I'm going to have e to the power of j 3t. So this is what I'm doing. So this actually is a function overlaid with the real part. So blue here is the cosine. So we have a cosine here of 3 hertz. So just uh, see the blue line here. And the red line here is the sine. Both red and blue, re red and blue functions are sine and cosine in frequency 3 hertz. So if I overlay our function, those, this previous function here, with those two um, base functions, sine and cosine, which one do you think it matches the most? So which one overlays or has a better um, match when we, when we compare? Is it the cosine or is it the sine? So what the Fourier transform does is actually making a product, a dot, uh, pointwise product between the function, sine and cosine, and the function that I'm evaluating. And here I'm showing you a plot of this multiplication. So in the top, uh, I'm showing the function, our function, multiplied with the cosine. And in the bottom, the function multiplied with the sine. See that uh, in here, in the blue one, the cosine, we do have some positive values, but we also have negatives positives and negatives, positives and, and negatives. What is going to happen when I sum everything here is that the positive values will cancel out with the negative ones. So I don't have a very good match. However, in here, practic practically all the values, the multiplications are positive. So they are all uh, above zero here. Some of them are, are negative, but it, this is fine, as long as uh, m many of them or most of them lie on the uh, positive side here. So this indicates that our function matches with a sine of 3 hertz a lot. So after multiplying using 3 hertz sine, the sum, when I sum everything, this, uh, this highlighted values here that are the product, approaches zero because a cosine of 3 hertz is not part of the signal. So the positives and negatives cancel each other out. In, on the other hand, for a 3 hertz sign, most values are positive because this wave is part of the signal. So this makes them the coefficient for the sine of 3 hertz very large, uh, much higher than the, this cosine. If I just then plot the absolute value just to, to see the uh, basic frequencies that dominate the signal, after computing the Fourier transform, 
I'm, I'm showing you here in the bottom the code to do that using SciPy. So I'm basically getting the function and computing its Fourier transform, and then I'm going to uh, show it by um, using the absolute number. So the absolute number of a complex number is basically the sum of the two components. So in here, I'm not, I'm not just um, separating sines and cosines, so I'm summing them up. Uh, it doesn't matter in this case because all functions are basically just uh, a regular function, a very simple function. So in the first one, as we can see here, we had three repetitions of a sign. So the peak of the Fourier transform is actually at three. When I use uh, 10 repetitions, then the Fourier transform has a peak exactly at 10. And this uh, last one here is actually, I, I computed using 50 repetitions of the pattern. And when I compute the Fourier transform, it outputs just 50. So um, the bottom line here is that the Fourier transform allows us to reconstruct the coefficient, or not to reconstruct, but to compute the coefficients of sines and cosines in different frequencies. This is used uh, in multiple applications. One of them is uh, electrocardiogram diagnosis. So the uh, when we measure the signals that come from our heart and how it uh, in using electrodes. So it, this is a very common procedure, a medical procedure to see if a patient has heart uh, problems. So um, this function has a shape and this function is also periodic. So it makes it um, ad an adequate case for Fourier analysis. And when we see this shape, and we looked at the different frequencies that are within this shape, we are going to be um, able, for example, to note that there is uh, something wrong with that wave. However, uh, the Fourier analysis are, um, are, are made or are designed to understand signals that have uh, stationary property. What I mean by that is that the frequencies that compose the signal are presumed to be the same along all the signal. So for example here I have um, a signal that is built by two, two uh, functions. One of them has frequency 3 and the other one is uh, frequency 10. So the Fourier transform will give us will output two peaks, one at 3 and one at 10. However, if I use a function that starts with a frequency, let's say 5, and then suddenly jumps to 13 hertz, then the Fourier transform will shows, show us two peaks, one of them at 5, one, the second one at 13 but it's not going to show me where those frequency occurs. So I say, or I, I can see that 5 hertz, uh, so the signal has one, um, one frequency that dominates it, it, which is 5 hertz, which is confirmed by the actual function, and a second one, which is 13, that also uh, has a significant part of the signal. But uh, from the Fourier transform, I cannot see actually where they happen and um, exactly how to interpret that in terms of the time. So this is um, a limitation of frequency analysis. But in any case, uh, the frequency analysis shows us what are the main frequencies, so they are, what are the com frequency components that are most, uh, most important for uh, a given signal that is under study.